in this video lecture we're going to learn about basic salts now basic salts are formed when a weak acid is neutralized so whenever a weak acid is neutralized a basic salt is formed what that means is for i'll take the example of one weak acid which is uh which is h2co3 remember most of the organic acids are weak acids uh h2co3 is also an organic acid uh, so h2co3 is a weak acid what that means is that this acid doesn't it doesn't like to ionize it doesn't want to produce h plus one ion so it partially ionizes or weakly ionizes it produces two h plus ions and one co3 two minus ion when it ionizes so when h2co3 is dissolved in water it's going to produce two h plus one ions and one co3 two minus ion but since uh, it's a weak acid it partially it only partially ionizes what that basically means is that if i have 100 molecules of h2co3 only a few a couple of the molecules are going to break down and they're going to produce h plus one so so if let's say out of the 100 98 remain as they are only one or two are going to break up and produce h plus one ions so they're going to produce four h plus one ions and they're going to produce two co3 two minus ions so so compared to the h2co3 very few H plus 1 and CO3 2 minus ions are actually produced. So this is what is meant by a weak acid. Now we're going to come to the point uh, what happens when a salt is formed from this weak acid. What we mean by salt formation is salts are formed when, a, when an acid is neutralized. Now the reason why H2CO3 is an acid is that because it's capable of producing it produces H plus 1 ions. So this is the main reason why this is classified as an acid because it is capable, it has H plus 1 ions, so it is capable of producing H plus 1 ions. So if I neutralize it, what that means is I get rid of all the hydrogen from the uh, acid and replace it with any other positive ion. For example, I can replace it with sodium ions, so the formula is going to be Na2CO3. So all the H plus 1 in the acid they got replaced by some other positive ion so if they got replaced by some other positive ion now this thing over here is called a salt it's called a salt because it's no longer able to act as an acid Na2CO3 doesn't have any H plus 1 ion so it wouldn't be able to produce H plus 1 ion so that means then that the acid has been neutralized so you had an acid which was capable of producing H plus 1 ions but once you got rid of all the H plus 1 replaced it with some other positive ion, it could be any positive ion, a salt is formed because this can no longer produce H plus 1 ion. So this salt is formed. Now this salt, because it is formed from a weak acid, this H2CO3 was a weak acid, this salt would be called a basic salt. And I'll explain to you why it would be called a basic salt. It's, it would be called a basic salt. Now coming to the reason why this is called a basic salt. Now looking at this first uh, uh, ionization reaction, what we suggested was that H2CO3 doesn't want to get ionized. It, it had a very less uh, lower tendency to get ionized. So, so very few H plus 1 and CO3 minus 2 ions would, would be produced. Or vice versa, we could have said that if there were any CO3 2 minus ions or H plus 1 ions, they would be combining to form H2CO3. They don't like to remain in the ionized form. That is what is meant by a weak acid. That the attraction between ions is so strong that any H plus 1 or CO3 minus 2 ions up, if they are produced, they're going to go back and they're going to form uh, H2CO3 back again. They, they're not going to remain in the ionized form, which is why very few H plus 1 ions would be produced by this particular acid. Now, I have this I have this basic salt. Now this basic salt, the reason why it's called a basic salt, this basic salt has two ions. One is the sodium ion and the other one is the CO3 minus 2 ion. So it has these two ions. Now if it has a CO3 2 minus ion and if there are any H plus 1 ions floating around, let's say they're in a solution of water, water has these H plus ions, so if there are any H plus 1 ions floating around in the solution, 
then what would the CO3 minus 2 ion do? It's quickly going to grab one of the, a few of the H plus 1 ions and it's going to quickly try to form H2CO3 back again. So this CO3 2 minus ion would get hold of a few, a couple of H plus 1 ion and it's going to form H2CO3 back again. It's going to try its best to form H2CO3 back again. So what that means is that if you have this salt, the CO3 ions in the salt, they have a very high tendency to attract H plus 1 ions. So if they attract H plus 1 and form the acid back again, so they're accepting H plus 1 ions. If they're accepting H plus 1 ion, anything that accepts H plus 1 ion or is a proton acceptor would be called a, a base. So this salt over here, which is uh, of a weak acid, the carbonate ion has a very high attraction for H plus 1 ion. So if there's a carbonate ion, if it sees an H plus 1 ion, it's going to grab that H plus 1 ion, it's going to form H2CO3 back again. So the chances of H2CO3 ionizing are very less, which means that the chances of H2CO3 producing H plus 1 ions is going to be very less. Vice versa, the chance of CO3 2 minus attracting an H plus 1 and forming H2CO3 back again, that chance would be very high. The probability for that happening would be very high. So whenever you have CO3 2 minus ion in a salt, that salt would be able to act as a base because it would be able to grab a few of the H plus ions roaming around. It would be able to form H2CO3 back again. Hence that salt over here, we started off with this basic salt. That salt, since it's accepting H plus 1 or one of the ions in the salt is accepting H plus 1 ions, hence it could be called a basic salt.